Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley from Inclipse and welcome to another video. Now in today's tutorial, I'm going to show how to create cards with belly bands. These are bands that wrap around the card and they're usually cards with two different flaps on them so it keeps them closed for the recipient. And I'm going to show kind of how to incorporate that in your design and create some really cool unique belly bands to wrap around your cards. Now in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on Neat and Tangled's new Christmas release. I think these products are super awesome and adorable and I think they created some really fun projects. There's even this one here that holds a little candy cane in the penguin's arms. Um, I think that's super fun and you could hand these up to students or teachers as little gifts before the holidays, which I think is super awesome. So without further ado, let's get right on into the tutorial and get started. Okay, so for this first card, I'm going to show how to create a stamped background that's super colorful and then make a belly band with images on it that doesn't cover up the background but really ties the card together nicely. So I'm going to start off by cutting a piece of cardstock in half at five and a half. And this is how I would do a regular side folding card. But here's where it gets a little bit different. I'm going to score at two and one eighth, and then I'll flip it and score at two and one eighth from the other side. So this is just going to create two flaps that fold into the card, and this will open from the center. So you'll have two flaps that open up really nicely, and the belly band is what's going to hold this together and keep the card from opening up on the recipient without you wanting to. So both of these flaps fold in, and then I'm going to crease them down with my bone folder to make sure they're nice and folded down. Now I'm going to take some, a little tiny bit of adhesive and I'm going to just put that on both sides and fold them together in like this. I'll remove that adhesive later, but that just holds it down while we're stamping. I'm going to use this Neat and Tangled Backdrop Stamp. This is super nice for different techniques, but it's also really great to create a really nice solid stamped background because it'll give that really nice solid image since it's stamping. So I'll adhere that down onto my Misty exactly in the center of my card there, and then we can start our stamping. Now, I also want to make sure that I'm going to push down the air bubbles out of this big backdrop stamp. That really helps to make sure that you get a nice crisp image every time. Now, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks to do my stamping since they stamp down really nicely. And I'm going to start off with my Victorian Velvet color here and take a rag and start blotting the color down. Now, this kind of worked in the first place. Um, this is my first attempt though, but I thought it would be really nice to show you guys this, just to show you my thought process and why this kind of doesn't work super well. Now, you definitely could go about it this way and continue upwards, but as I went up and kind of kept going, it got a little bit sloppier and a little bit sloppier, and it was really difficult to make the colors blend since they were so harsh being stamped down like this. So I'm going to still blot it off with my rag though, and I kept going until the top of the colors until I really decided that it wasn't gonna work out and the blending just wasn't enough for me. You can definitely go this route if you want to. However, I found a little bit of an easier way that makes the colors blend nicely and creates that similar background effect. So usually I don't stamp with the blending tools and try to ink up a stamp like this. It just takes far too long with a lot of different inks. But since these Distress Oxide inks have that mix of dye and pigment, they lay down that color really quickly. So I went in with that blending tool and I'm going to dab on the color and you can see there it fades out really nicely. So this is going to help us fade into the next color. Now you might want to ask why I'm stamping this with a backdrop, backdrop stamp when I could just tape off the edges. I find the backdrop stamp actually creates a more solid image and gives me crisper edges because it's being stamped down rather than being blended on the surface, but you could definitely do it either way. I just find this to be really awesome to have this stamp and do it like this. Now I'm just going to keep moving up and doing the exact same thing each time. Now I did two layers of each color, um, around there you could do two or three, but I find that builds up the color really nicely and using this blending tool makes sure that it fades off into the next color really nicely. So I'm just using a variety of Distress Oxides starting out with kind of an orangey tan color and then moving up into a blue with some pinks and purples in between there. I find that creates a really nice sunset kind of nighttime sky and it looks really beautiful on your cards. So I'm going to um, go to the top there and you'll see it, what's nice about having it in the misty here is that you can do it multiple times. So I continued to ink that one up until the white space was gone. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my spray and I'm just going to lightly mist this. This is just going to give uh, some little drops here and there and kind of help blend and oxidize that color. Now I didn't do it so that the color bled, I just did it enough so I would get some extra detail on that background. 
Now, earlier I said that I was going to remove that adhesive, so I took just an adhesive eraser on the inside there and got rid of all that adhesive so that it doesn't stick together anymore. And then I'm moving on into the Stay Cool stamp set. I just love these adorable images. And by the way, everything will be linked down below in the description to all the supplies and over at my blog too. So I'm taking one of the little snowflakes from that Stay Cool stamp set, and I'm just going to use some white pigment ink from scrapbook.com and stamp that all over my background. Now this just kind of turns it into a winter background and transforms it and adds a little bit of extra detail here and there too. Now I'm also taking some of the adorable images from that set as well and stamping them down onto a piece of Bristol cardstock, and I'm using some pr premium black dye inks so that I can do my watercoloring with it. Now I'm going in with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, and I love using these markers. I haven't used them in a long time, but they really create a nice dreamy kind of watercolor look. So I'm going to color in all of these images and do my shading with these markers. Now like I said, I'm using Bristol cardstock as I find whenever I use any type of markers. I love this cardstock because it allows it a little bit of time to move and doesn't really dry into the surface completely for a little while. So it gives you a little bit of extra time to work and blend around your markers, which I really find helpful. So I'm going in and coloring this little boy sitting on top of that polar bear, adding a little bit of texture to the hood by just touching that real brush pen to the paper and blending it out just a little bit. Now I'm not actually using this little otter image, I thought I was going to use all of them, but there wasn't enough room. However, I did want to share, in case if you want to do this with your polar bear or other critters, you can add a little bit of grey and then add some light pastel kind of colours to it. So I threw in a little bit of blue and pink here, and then blended it out a little bit, and that creates a really awesome dreamy look and adds a little bit of extra colour and detail to your images. Now here I'm using the Gemini Go, and I'm just going to tape down all of the dies with some frog tape here, and I'm going to run this right through my machine. Now these are the coordinating dies, so they really help. And with the Gemini machines, you want to make sure the die is facing up, right into the cutting plates as you cut through. Now I'm going to make a video on this for sure. I've been loving this machine for sitting on my desk, and it does some really easy jobs, so you don't have to pull out a big machine. And also it runs through by itself, so if you have problems running it through a crank machine, this is great for you. So I'm just going to pop those images right out and that cuts really nicely and then I'm going to use these images right onto my card. So I can set those other two off to the side for a project, but I'm using this fun little polar bear image for my card today. So let's move on to creating the actual belly band for the card. This is where it gets kind of interesting and really completes the card and ties it all together. So I'm going to cut a piece of vellum, a little strip of vellum, and I'm using the long way of the cardstock. This allows me room to fold it over to the back of the card and have a little bit of excess to kind of adhere together. So I'm going to take a piece, and this is not too mathematical or anything here. This is one way you can do it. I'm just taking the piece and folding it right over onto the card. Now you want to leave a little bit more room than I did. I pulled it a little bit too tight, so it's a little snug on that card more than I would like it to be. So leave a little bit of extra room so it slides really nicely, and then you could adhere it down onto the back there. So I'm folding it over right onto each other, and then I'll add adhesive onto the back of one side and fold it right over to each other. And I'll do the same thing, adding some adhesive to that last flat portion, and I'll add that right down as well. Now this makes that little belly band, so this has two sides to it, and it slides right onto your card, almost like a little pocket. And this will keep your card nice and closed, as it is a double flap card, so you don't want it to open randomly on your recipient. And I like having this little closure here, and now we're going to complete it to kind of finish off our card. So to do that, I just took this polar bear image with that little boy on it, I think that's such an awesome image, and I'm going to just stick it right onto that vellum there. So it's really just as simple as that. I just used some tape runner adhesive, and I'm just going to adhere it right down. And any extra adhesive, I'm just going to go in with my adhesive eraser on the back and just erase any sticky away. So then once I'm done with that, I'm going to finish off this belly band with a sentiment. I kind of tied everything together onto the belly band and really completed the card with this element here. So I'm using a couple different sentiments that I've stacked up from that Stay Cool stamp set. And I'm going to adhere those together onto an acrylic block, use some clear mark ink, and stamp that right down onto my vellum here. Now once that's stamped down, I'm going to take some embossing powder. Here I'm using the Princess Gold from Ranger. I have been obsessed with this stuff lately. It creates a really nice bright gold color, which I just love. So I'm going to heat this, but I want to heat it in little increments, so I'll move it on and off the cardstock to make sure that doesn't warp my vellum, as that can be a little more sensitive. 
And then I'll pull that onto the card there, and I really love how that turned out. That background and belly band really tie nicely together, and it doesn't cover up the background at all. Now next for this card, I'm going to be creating another belly band that kind of has the image incorporated into it and sticks out from the top of the belly band. So for this belly band, I'm doing something a little bit different. I actually took the piece of cardstock and scored it right at two and a half, and then I'll move that score mark down to the zero and leave a little bit of extra room and score it at four and one fourth. So that's going to be the width of my card. And then I'll score it at two and a half again, and that's just going to be where I cut my cardstock. So here I'm cutting it right on that last score mark that I created, and then I'm going to have two flaps that fold over, and this creates that belly band nicely. I'm going to do the same thing after I fold it over that second side. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive and it creates that nice band to go right around the card. So this is a little bit different with cardstock. You want to leave a little bit of extra room in there because it's thicker. So I did leave some extra room as I was scoring, so I moved it to that zero and scooted it over just a little bit. Now for this one, I'm going to be using the Snow Fun stamp set. This has this fun little snowman in it that I've stamped down, and I'm stamping it near the top of the belly band, and you'll see why in just a second. And it also has this adorable little bird, which I'm stamping sitting right onto its little hand there. Now I'm going to um, move into my Misty here for the sentiment. I like doing this just so I can make sure that it's lined up nice and straight. So I'm using the grid marks on the lid there to make sure my sentiment is super nice and lined up. And I also don't want to ruin the card either, so I'm going to stamp that down in some black ink there, and I can stamp it twice if I need to as well. Now I'm going to color in the snowman quickly here. I'm using just regular alcohol markers, and these happen to be the tonic alcohol markers. And these are super easy to blend. I've been having lots of fun with these lately. They come in packs of three, so they blend together really nicely. Here I'm using just a lighter gray color and then the blender marker to blend it out. With all snow or white things, I like to color with a little bit of gray. That way it still has that depth and dimension rather than just leaving it completely white. And then for its Christmas hat up top, I'm coloring in with some red colors here. It's actually more of a peachy red. I don't like to do exactly red colors. I like to go a little bit off there. So I'm going to blend it in with these three colors, and they blend perfectly because they were in that pack of three. So there's no guesswork involved in choosing your markers, which I really like. Now I'll color in that little blue bird there too, and not using traditional Christmas markers. I just did red and blue colors to kind of tie together that snowman. And then I colored in this little bird's hat too, which I just think is so much fun. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to bring this into my trimmer, which has a guide in it. This happens to be a Fisker's trimmer, and I'm going to take that and just cut right along that bottom of the snowbank and leave a little bit of room before I hit the image there. I'll lift it up and go to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now this is just going to create a straight line that's cut across, but I just avoided cutting where the snowman was. Now this is because I'm going to take this out and I'm going to just cut right around that snowman with the scissors here, leaving a little bit of a white border. So this is a really fun way to create a belly band with an image that sticks out of it. So it adds a little bit of extra detail to the card and this really kind of stands out on its own as a really detailed piece of the card. So I really like how this looks. I'm just going around simply and cutting it out with my scissors here. Now you could do this with an X-Acto knife too if you would like to, but I find scissors to be really helpful. And here's that finished belly band. Again, I really love how that image sticks out. I think it's super unique um, with that sticking out of the belly band there. So I've added adhesive to that to make it that belly band. And then for the card base, I cut it like I would a top folding card, except I'm going to score it at three and one fourth. And then I'm going to flip it over and score it at two and one fourth. So this is going to create a folding card here. Um, it has two folds in it. One is going to be smaller than the other here. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but when I pull this belly band off, you'll see it has two flaps that open up into kind of a top folding card, but with just two flaps. So it's a little bit different than my other one. Now I'm going to be using this fa la 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 background die from Neat and Tangled. This one is super awesome. I love this with all those fun little words in it. And these background dies are so much fun to use. So I ran that through my Gemini Junior and I just wanted to show you how easily these machines cut through. You can already see lots of those little pieces have fallen out and all I had to do was just tap it out of the garbage and all the pieces came out nicely, which I just love. Um, so then I'm going to tape this down to the top piece of my card. So this is the top flap that opens up that's a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to create a background for that snowman belly band to sit on. 
Now I've taped it off and I'm going to just tap some white pigment ink right through this. This is that same white pigment ink from scrapbook.com and I'm just using a Nuvo blending sponge. So this is just gonna apply the color really nice and thick there and it just gives a little bit of detail to that top piece of the background, which I really like. Now you could definitely just adhere this dye down right there and have that white against the craft, but I like how it looks blended out like this too. There are many options you could do with this. So now it's like Christmas here when you peel off this stencil, it creates a really awesome look. I just love peeling stencils off and seeing what you've created underneath. So since that white pigment ink has a drying time, which I don't really like, it's a little bit longer of a drying time, I decide to just throw some clear heat embossing over it. I'm a little impatient and don't want to smear it, so this just adds a little bit of extra dimension and shine to that as well. Now for the bottom panel, I didn't just want to leave it plain, so I decided to throw in a little bit of color. I'm just going to blend on a little bit of tumbled glass distress oxide here. And since it's that oxide with pigment ink in it, it's going to look really great and bright on top of that craft cardstock, which I just love the look of that. I think it looks so awesome with that light color there. So once everything's complete, I'll slide on my belly band of that little snowman there, right over top of that fold, and I think that looks really awesome and completes that card really nicely. And it's got a little bit of a different fold and a different belly band, which I think is super awesome with that image sticking out from it. It really creates a unique look. Now for this last one, I'm gonna share how to create kind of a more 3D one with this little penguin on top of it. It's a super awesome die that holds that candy cane inside. So this is the penguin treat holder die set. It doesn't look like a ton when it's in the package here, but I promise it is so awesome to put together and create a lot of these. So if you want to mass produce Christmas cards or different Christmas treats, it'll be really easy since this die isn't really coloring or anything like that, and you really just have to adhere it together. So I'm just adding some adhesive to the back of that white piece and adhering it onto the penguin's body, which I cut out of black cardstock. Now I cut out all the little pieces in white cardstock and I'm gonna go in and just color these in. For me, that was easier than just pulling out a ton of different colors of cardstock, but you could definitely go in with different colors of cardstock maybe to speed up the process for you if that is easier than going in with markers here. But for me, it was just easier to color these little images in with markers. So then to adhere it all together, it was pretty easy. I just took a little bit of liquid adhesive and I'm going to stick down the little bow tie there with some liquid adhesive, just sticking that right down into the center of that little guy's chest. And you could definitely make this a girl penguin too by adding that to the top of its head and making it a little bow. So it's kind of versatile like that and I think that would be really awesome to make little boys and little girl penguins as well. I'll add on that little beak, and then for the little feet here, I'm adding some glue to the top of the leg, and then I'll stick it down to the back of the penguin and move it around until it's perfect. And I'll do that with both legs here to make sure they're nice and centered in that penguin. And I like to use the liquid adhesive here because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room in case if it's not perfect when you put it down and you have to move it around a little bit. It really helps out to have that liquid adhesive there. So now after I'm done with all of that, you can definitely stop here and just adhere the penguin to your card. It doesn't have to be holding anything. However, you can definitely bend these penguin's arms upward, add a little bit of adhesive there um, just to the tip of the arm, and then it leaves little holes where you can slide in a candy cane. I definitely didn't have anything on my desk except for a pen, so I just slid a little white gel pen in here. Maybe you wanna give a gift to your crafty friends, but you could definitely slip a candy cane in for the holidays as well. Now for the little sentiment, I just decided to add it right onto the penguin, just a little sentiment from that Stay Cool set that says hugs. And I'm just gonna keep it simple and add the penguin down to a piece of vellum. So that's just a really easy way to make that belly band and kind of tie that together. Now for this card base, I did that same side folding um, two flap card base that I did in the first card. And then I'm gonna take that white pigment ink and the Nouveau sponge again, and just complete this background off really simply just by dabbing it onto the surface. I'm obsessed with doing this to create really simple backgrounds. It just creates those perfect little snowflakes that are circular. And then I'll go in with the tip of the blending sponge here, and I'm just going to dot on some littler white areas. And that'll create little snowflakes there, which I really love the look of, and it just completes and finishes off that background really nicely. So I kept this one really simple. You can definitely mass produce that with the little penguin and this really easy background to create for your Christmas cards or Christmas treats for different classmates or teachers. 
So I'll slide this right over top of that card, and I think that looks so awesome. Just kept it really simple with the vellum and the penguin, and that really nice easy background, but it really creates that stunning effect with the candy cane too. So what'd you guys think? I hope you really liked all three of those cards and learned a little bit more about how to create some unique belly bands for your cards. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this one from me. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite from today's video. I would love to chat with you all down there as I really enjoy that. And I'll see you all very soon for another card making and crafting video. Bye!